here we are. So, as I was just saying, Arabia is a map that's played all the time. Arabia is seen in tournaments, Arabia is seen on the ladder, and I'm sure many of you play Arabia when you play the game. But for Loi the Legends, I haven't been doing a lot of Arabia recently because of how common it is. But that's exactly what we have here, and we have a classic Civ matchup. There are many people out there who love and hate the Huns, and there are many people out there who love and hate the Goths. And it's a matchup where it can get to a certain point where the Huns truly have no counter. Because if you're, you want a late game unit against the Goths, it's usually going to be the champion. And Huns are one of few civilizations that do not get access to champion. What the Huns do have, though, is uh, they don't have to make houses. They have the faster producing stables. They have the cheaper cav archers. They save a lot of wood with the whole house thing. Their ability to flood army and be aggressive is unlike many other civs in the game. So that's generally speaking the name of the game for the Huns. Whereas for the Goths, you can be aggressive. You can do some different things with them, of course. But uh, ultimately, you want that castle. So you can make Huskarls. And then Huskarls are an answer to the Cav Archers or any Archer. And then combine that with your cheap Pikemen, which is a counter to Knights. It's like, it's a deadly duo. Um... Goths are probably still one of the most imbalanced civs in the game. They either get completely destroyed, or it gets to a point where nobody can stop them. So it's a really fun civilization to cast, because it's like me constantly talking about, are the players aware of this? What are the players going to do before that stage of the game arrives? So far for Red, Red has been all about uh, food. So Red hasn't gone for any standard build. Red's been crazy on food. I, I don't hate it. Like, more and more, I actually try and, like, delay lumber camps and take some food from time to time to get a slightly faster fuel age. So, I don't mind this at all. It looks very efficient. Um, Red scouting also looks pretty solid so far. I also like how this elo, Red's, like, feeding one sheep at a time. So, that's clearly well thought out here from Red. Again, very good scouting. We'll see if any boars get brought in. Blue, on the other hand... Um, you know, it's chopping some straggler trees, uh, going for the mill before the lumber camp, but it's going to go for the lumber camp now, or isn't. And blue, okay, there we go. I think blue actually decided to drop off the wood before building the lumber camp. And, wow, really smart, actually. Maybe needed to do that to be able to afford a house. And no offense to any 650 ELO players out there, but I normally wouldn't expect the player to like, realize that in the moment. Feel like they might realize that after the fact so that was impressive i'm thinking you know maybe in feudal age we'll see some scouts from the huns uh the dark age from red has been really strong so far but i haven't seen 650 elo on arabia recently i saw some 650 elo games today some players didn't go for feudal age aggression at all other players did i think it very much depends but I am wondering if Red knows how bad this matchup can be later on. I imagine probably not to the same degree as we do. And if Red has a plan to try and stop it. Because the struggle is, if you're Red, you might not be an aggressive player in the first place. You might be more of a defensive guy. And that's fine for a time, but eventually you're going to want to apply some pressure there to the Goths. And we have a viewer of mine who's absolutely obsessed with the Goths in supplies, which is super ironic because goths don't get supplies but that that's the joke i guess um but we also have another viewer who i don't know if is in chat right now named stashvo and stashvo despises the goths in fact supplies probably killed stashvo once or twice with the goths like anytime we see the goths there's just like this anxious reaction from stash uh, sorry to call you out in particular because i know other people don't like goths either but if you're watching, you probably know that goth spam and how annoying it can be and how you feel like you've done everything right and then all of a sudden you're just like, oh, the sieve is disgusting. So <laughs> definitely something I'm aware of is that there's both sides to it, right? Um, I actually remember some epic goth versus huns games pre-definitive edition because remember back then we only had like 20-some sieves, right? Now there's like 45. So even doing random Civ games, it's just so much less likely that you're ever going to get this matchup now. 
So this is a matchup that I had seen in my random Civ games a lot more in the past. And there's just certain games that stick with me. And I remember having a 30 vil lead and losing to Goths. And then I also remember having this like crazy game where I was going Knights and Cav Archers against Pikemen and Huskarls and somehow making it happen. So both those games were actually against Spring, if you know him uh, as a USA player. I, he's not too active these days. All right, so almost looks like a fast castle build from Blue. Uh, nope, I lied. Well, I mean, he still could try it. Blue's actually making militia now. Okay, so Blue hasn't found the enemy, but if Blue looked and paid attention, could look this way. And it looks like a fast castle build from Red as well. We have the final turkey being brought in. We have lots of farms. I don't think it'll be perfect for Red. Red still hasn't taken any gold. But that could be what Red's planning on here. Drush, which is what you call what's happening here, into Fast Castle at this elo would blow my mind. But it feels like that's the plan. Like, freak him out, apply pressure. I don't know about chasing the scout here. And then try and get up to Castle Age as we see the boar getting brought in from blue. Okay. Forgot that one. Whoops. Uh, thank God you kill these things a little faster with goths. Okay. And now we have a tiger attacking a villager. And the villager might win because of the hill. No, no, no. It doesn't know it, though. Why is there a villager over here, Red? What's happening? Oh, no. Oh, no. You got to be careful where you walk these days in Arabia, guys. The tiger gets him. Vicious. The tiger's like, nom, 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 nom. I haven't eaten in three weeks. Nice. Well, I'm happy for the tiger because the tiger looks pretty bored earlier. Is Red going to run over there and kill the tiger because he's angry at it? Is he going to go back to that spot and kill it? <laughs> I would not advise this, especially if your buddy just died to it, but scouts do beat tigers. Now you've got a weaker scout. But I guess it's important to send a message to the rest of the tigers, right? You, you don't want tigers to think that they can just go killing your villagers with no consequences. So, okay, Red. And Red Scout's just going to, like, prance over its body to a little ritualistic thing. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Well played, buddy. Well played. Um, now, here come four militia from Blue. And Red definitely wanted to go to Castle Age. Oh, God. Red doesn't have Loom yet. Oh, there is a tower there, though. That's interesting. I don't know, man. Like, Blue could click up now. I mean, look at the houses now. This is such a unique game. Bloodlines from Red... Which is going to make this scout... It's going to give... Oh, it's going to give HP back to the scout! And the tower does actually end up being really valuable here because it pushes all Blue's attack away. Wait a second. Okay, so I think we should establish this. Spending all those resources on Bloodlines and skipping Loom, probably not wise when you only have one scout. Probably not wise. Fighting back without Loom? Eh! Not fun. Wouldn't suggest it. And so far, two villagers have gone down for red. But I need to know. So this scout's at 40 HP now. Before the attack. Before the attack, what HP did it have? Okay, where is he? 37. <laughs> so wait a second. This is what happens, all right? So this is the full story that we wouldn't have never known had we not thought about this a little bit. So, dumb villager who ventures out into the wilderness alone without protection dies. And so the king, he's upset about that because that was like his third cousin or something. And so he calls the scout and says, hey, you got to go kill that tiger. He just killed my third cousin. And he's like, no, I don't want to. He's like, you have to or you're going to die too. He said, fine, but can I get my HP back? Can I please get my HP back? Because that's going to hurt. So he attacks the tiger. He loses his HP. Takes him down to 28 HP. And the king had made a deal with him. And the king said, sure. I'll get my other cousin to make a stable and research bloodlines for you. Which is going to be totally worth it. Because you're going to go from 37 HP 
all the way to... Wait for it. Come on. Come on. You're ruining the whole thing, Red. Come on. Couldn't you have done this faster? Come on. Bloodlines. All the way to... 40 HP. Boom. He's even better than when he started. Totally worth it. Anyways, we're back on track now. This is going to be an interesting game. Uh, Blue is still in Dark Age. So, you know, like... That could be an issue in the long run, especially if Red makes scouts. <laughs> and uh, it's not an if. It's a when. Red said, oh, I don't need to make houses? All right. Here we go. And he makes 10 scouts. That will now have bloodlines. And Blue isn't walled. And this could be really, really, really bad for Blue. However, the houses are pretty. I'll give him that. So. Um, now, Blue were to be fully walled. I mean, Blue can make the feudal. Blue can make two buildings. And then Blue can end up going up to the next stage. And everything's fine. So I think, like, part of Red's thinking is going to be... Let's clear up the militia and the scout first. But Red really needs to get the Blue's base. Blue has just been very relaxed about the walling, right? This is walling here now. And scouts are going to be coming to town. So this is exactly what you want to do against the Goths. Especially after you've already lost two villagers. At, make it three, actually. That villager's gone down. Red villagers just keep leaving the town. It's like they've, they've heard something is coming and they just don't want to be there. Uh, okay, uh, Blue has not reacted thus far to this scout. And now you've got a scout here as well. Blue has reacted to this scout. You have the garrison from Blue, not the town bell, which I appreciate this elo. And the TC is coming in clutch. But you've got more scouts and more villagers exposed. And Blue really needs to get some army out here. That villager's probably going to die. This villager will actually survive. And back come the militia, and Blue's making more militia. So Red, trying to even out the score here. TC still garrisoned. Scout running around. Scout's going to die again. Not too bad for Blue. He's got four militia. Obviously, that's going to lose to the scouts. But if you could make some spearmen too. It could have been way worse. Mm, scout's still attacking. You can tell Blue really likes to play Goths. Because Blue's going to drop another barracks. And more scouts are on the way. Uh-oh. Goth player. You going to have the time here? Uh-oh. This is getting worse. Okay, now the Spearmen are on the way. So this is a stressful time. Keep in mind, it is Arabia. It's one of the more aggressive maps you'll see in the game. Blue is doing the right thing to garrison and not ring the bell, which is epic because the rest of the eco continues to work. And it feels like even though Red's units are going to be a little better, there's just so much random crap out here from Blue that Red might not have enough. Credit to Red, though. Red did create villagers throughout some of those attacks, which a lot of players don't do. Okay, wall's completed there. Uh, Blue just needs to complete the wall here, and then suddenly the Goths become really terrifying for the Huns. <laughs> I hate Goths. It's zero strategy. Just pray you don't F.I. What, fast imp? I, it, I've heard that thing a million times. Like, it's zero strategy, right? It is a strategy. It's one-sided, yes. And I think people who play Goths... Uh, no offense, Supplies, because you're in my chat. I think people who play Goths to a certain extent do so because they don't think they can compete in certain aspects of the game, and they hope that the Goths can bail them out later. But it's incorrect to say it's zero strategy. Like, Blue went for a really creative drush, and, you know, he's he's has to thwart this crazy attack, right? You know, people who hate getting scout rush could also say, I hate scout rushes. It's your strategy. You just do the same thing. You just make scouts and kill villagers and go to cast lane. You know, like, you can apply that logic kind of to everything. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I'm a little stressed looking at Blue's base, but I have to say, Blue has, has been there, done that, apparently. I'm sure a couple more villagers went down, but the resources are still there for Blue. Blue just doesn't have the buildings yet to go up to the next stage. Hmm. Red could click up the castle, and then it's always a question of... 
what do you do? So here's my advice if you're ever in this position. Obviously, you you know your opponent's got Spearman, right? So you have to like play based on what you've seen and then switch in to counter it. Blue has seen scouts, so he's going to go for a bunch of Spearmen. But don't let the idea of Huskarls scare you away from going into Cav Archers here, okay? Some players will freak out. They know Huskarls exist. They never want to make Archers against Scouts. Don't treat it that way. Make your Cav Archers. Force them to actually do the move. And <laughs> Red goes, Cav Archers, you say? Okay. <laughs> here we go. And he's going to go for five ranges. Now, I don't think those ranges are going to be completed anytime soon, but okay. <laughs> I disagree, T90. I dislike the Goths because it's the only thing that they can do well. It's very one-dimensional. Oh, you mean like only thing the Civ can do well? Well, I mean, there's other Civs like that too, I guess. But yeah, I mean, they are very one-dimensional. So you like variety. You like to die to variety as opposed to dying to, to the same unit line. Gotcha. Well, it'll be interesting to see if Blue can come back from this one because Blue has defended the attack. But look at how late the cast age time is going to be in comparison. Like, Blue is going to wall this way. Now we have an archery range. But like, Red's going to have so much time. But that's the beauty of low elo. Is like, can the players take advantage of the time? Because by the time Red makes it to castle... Nice patrol there on the cho- Look at that. Sitting there right in the tile. That's actually so smart. That was a really cool play. Um, but yeah, like, Red's probably gonna have the resources for a castle, and it's gonna get bad if you don't kill fast. Hmm. Yeah, players themselves, there's a lot of players that are one-dimensional, right? A lot of players pick the same Civ all the time, and they go for the same strat all the time. That's just how a lot of people enjoy the game. Other people enjoy more variety. No loom, by the way, for red, so he's got to be careful here. But he is going to garrison, kill the spearmen, and then he's going to have the cab archers running forward. We have ourselves a game as long as blue clicks up to castle age. Oh my goodness, Mirza. Mirza. Click up. You could go imp. <laughs> oh, jeez. Castle age is kind of important here. Kind of important. Come on. I find, like, it, it, first off, it's okay to not like something, right? But I find reasonings for not liking, like, someone playstyle or, like, a certain civilization, generally speaking, is always a, a teensy bit hypocritical because it's like, I don't like it when someone kills me in a way I don't like. I hate it when people go for that unit I really struggle against. Ah. And, like, the whole point of playing someone is to, like, kind of kill them. <laughs> it's a right. It's like, it's not to make it easy for you. I get it. Don't get me wrong. Like, if I see a Sravamsha Rider right now, I, I just filled with anxiety. I hate the unit's existence, and I wish it never was brought into the game. Uh, so I get it. There's certain things where I'm like that, too. Can Blue hold this off? Can, can Blue thwart this attack? Because the Cav Archers are out. And it feels like the Cav Archer numbers could be even higher for Red. But it's not easy at this ELO to be able to always make the units and always micro the units. And Blue, as we said, is just making a lot of stuff and might be able to hold to eventually get Huskarls. And Blue also has a lot of resources collected, too. Okay, Red shoots the gate down. Spearmen still do a decent amount of bonus damage over here. And Red probably just looking at home right now. Very easy to lose track if you're trying to do other things, which is what Blue is actually doing. And Cav Archers are shredding. The KDs look decent here for Red as Red just runs right into Blue's base. Blue is getting more and more upgrades. Is trying to make skirms. Is trying to make Spearmen. Clearly, Blue's not a player that, like, has that micro. It's just all numbers, which is what goth players like. Okay. We have a tower here from blue. It's desperation, obviously. I, the thing I'll say about Mirza right now, I like how he isn't sending his units out one by one, and I love how he saves his villagers. 
I feel like so many players of this elo don't do a good job of both of those things. Because it, had he sent him out earlier, it would have been one at a time. Okay, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Still has some crazy resources, right? Okay, TC's killing a couple cav archers. Red was probably sending the new ones in. Lost a couple in the process. And goths are still in the game. It's a tale as old as time. It's not like Red hasn't tried to be aggressive here. Cav archers are going to do a loop, though. And let's see if blue can save these vills. Great job from Red to continue to move around. That's the beauty of the CA. So all these units have to come over. And it's still Panic City for the goth player. No stone now either, right? That's a big factor in all this. Red knows that all this stuff is very good, but I'm sure is worried. Because of anything being possible for the goths. Good good job from Red, though. Again, I'm going to applaud Red for moving around, right? Also, always creating villagers throughout these attacks. But Blue's done a really good job there, too, actually. Like, while losing vills, Blue has actually been creating vills for the most part. Guys, Blue's going to stabilize. <laughs> Blue's going to stabilize. And I can't wait to check the resources collected this game. Red's still running around like a nerd he is. And again, well played. But Blue's going to get there. Blue's going to kill these Cav Archers. And Red's going to have to think, what do I do next? Has this become the moment for the Goths? 14 villagers have been killed by Red. He's lost three. What's his decision now? It looks like he's stopping army production. He's a bit unsure. Now, resources collected. Not that big of a difference, right? Food count's actually a little higher here for blue. We now have chainmail armor coming in. That will apply to knights. Now, some people think that that applies to cav archers. Upgrading cav archers is a little confusing. The archer armor applies to cav archers, so red, you would have been completely fine there. But obviously, if he makes knights later, he'll be good to have that upgrade. I personally, like, just based on how he's playing this right now, I'm guessing he thinks that that makes his cav archers stronger. He already actually had full armor for Castle Age there. Um, but I like the second town center. Getting more villagers is good. Red now even getting iron casting. And blue just has elite skirm patrolling around, catching up on some upgrades, and is waiting for the stone. Crazy. So I will say this against anyone who doesn't like to play against players like blue, who just like wait and wait and wait and wait, and then eventually drop a castle and push everything back with Huskarls. It's actually a perfect style of player to play against if you want to improve, right? Like, if you want to learn to improve on your timings and any transitions, just learn aggression in general. It's a really good type of player to play against. Um, I, I've had many different styles, like tough nuts to crack over the years, where players are good defensively until they get to a really good unit. Like, there's a player... I always... I think I mispronounce it based on what comments say, but I think his name's pronounced Jiaohai or something similar to that. Guy would always pick Mongols. Just insane what he could do with Mongols. Mangadai. Ugh, it was so tough. Um, there's a player named Knight Style for a while who would actually pick Goths at a high level. Uh, he moved on from that, but for like a year, all he played was Goths, and he was top couple hundred. Hated it. Ugh, it was so tricky. Um, even if I won, it was just like stress all the time because I was worried. Um, players, like, styles like that are really fun to learn against. And, uh... Okay, so Red's going to try and punish Blue's defensive play. And... Oh my god, a tiger has killed this villager that was building the TC. <laughs> okay. But, like, that castle is an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's only with four vills. The elite skirms could kill the cav archers. They're fully upgraded. There's no knights for Red. Then blue is torn on what to fight. Do you fight the army or do you fight the cav archers? And red does have the hill here. You can tell the hill is making a big difference. I think red's castle will go up. So we had the woo 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 over here and we still don't have like a real sense of urgency from blue to make a castle. What's the deal? 
Maybe he plays every Civ like this. Long swords! He's making man at arms and he queued up long swords somewhere in there. Wow, man. That's, um. Well, that's not the infantry unit you really wanted here. And you definitely wanted the castle. So let's see. Blue's going to drop it over here now. The panic has is official. Blue's been very relaxed this game, right? Like, oh, okay. I've got cav archers. All right. Oh, that's fine. I'll just make some man at arms. Oh, okay. We'll make a couple palisade walls. Lost a couple scouts. Seems very relaxed, very chill. TC does get denied. More villagers will die. And and Red has played well. Two TCs. Forward castle. Let's see how many units Blue's able to field, though. I'd really love to see Blue cancel the longsword upgrade and all the man at arms, because that's food and gold you want for Huskarls, realistically. Huskarls can bring this back. Oh boy, we're gonna have another castle here. Oh boy, look at this waller too. He's gonna wall over towards the castle. Still just so many cav archers for red. No huskarl production of yet from the goths as we'll see another castle from red. Dang. I wonder, I, I really like to see more of red's games. Because, uh, not Red's games, sorry, Blue's games. Because honestly, I, I feel like he might just pick Goths because... Like, maybe he doesn't pick Goths every time. Maybe this is random Civ. I, I really don't know enough about him. But he hasn't really played this like a true Goth picker. Or like he knows that Huskarls are the end-all, be-all. And the unit you really want to go to is the Goths. Like, he's making Skirms... Pikes, all that stuff. I guess he's not making knights or anything like a lot of other civs would, but it doesn't really seem like he's aware of how good husk girls can be. Now that he's got double castle, he's got double production buildings for those husk girls, but he's going to have long swords and skirms. These castles being up are an invitation to do one thing, guys. You should, your mind should be screaming it the second you ever find a situation where you've got a forward castle denying a resource next to someone else with a castle. There's a place you need to go. Also, well done, Red. Look how many cav archers are in queue. Forward castle. Forward ca defensive castle. Good position. There's even a lull in the action. That's correct, Stashbo. Go up to him! Go up to him! And he might be saving for that, to be fair. Seems like that's definitely on his mind with the way the resources are going. And Blue's made a couple Huskarls. Okay. And Red's gonna go Rams, too. No! Go up to him! <laughs> I don't think this is throwable for Red. I think even if Red's Rams are a waste, Red's in a really good position here. He played super well. I wonder why he was sending that villager to the right corner earlier. Like, I wonder if he had that plan with that. I feel like we... He had to play more standard after that whole thing, so... I wonder if he was going to go for, like, sneaky stables or something. That's a lot of cav archers. Holy crap. This guy knows how to play Huns. He's kind of treating the cav archers like the Goths would treat infantry in most cases. He just, he just fights. He doesn't even care to micro, but... Oh, he sees the Huskarl, so he knows. Mm, castle's not up yet. Can he complete that castle? Looks like he will. I mean, there's always a chance with the Goths. It's full Huskarl now from Blue. Oh, boy. Huskarl skirm. Oh, sheesh. Okay. You know it would be epic because if blue just ran directly to red's base. You really think this is going to happen, red? Blue should be able to take out those rams, no problem. And now you have imp coming in for red. Good decision. So tough for blue here, though, right? Because, like, he has to come back. He has to defend from that. He's surrounded on one side. He can't take golds. He can't take stones that he'll want. Red's rams are actually making him have to respect this all the time, and it's just giving Red to do whatever else he wants. 
I think blue had a chance if blue would have dropped a castle right away in early castle. Or even if, if blue would have been in castle age faster this game. Just as a little too leisurely, a little too relaxed with getting to the next stage. Yeah, red has tons of stone. Holy crap. You could make two more. I like how he could make two more castles, but he couldn't even finish this mill. <laughs> Look how many cav archers he has in queue. 31 out of five ranges. Holy crap. And yeah, I guess he's just, you know, keeping blue at home. If blue had like 40 Huskarls and five Rams, all this could get pushed back. As good as Huskarls are against buildings, I think you would actually need to have Rams as well. Yep. I think this is not going to be it for the Goths here, supplies. I don't know, man. I mean, Cav Archers with Bracer and Chemistry. The base Pierce Armor, or get, let's just say the highest Pierce Armor a Huskarl can get in Castle Age is 8. Cav Archers could do... Oh, never mind. Whoa, Red resigns? Wait a second. Did he disconnect? Or is somebody trying to lose games on purpose? Played really well. I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he disconnected. Ah, oh, man. The colors were different in the game itself, so sorry about that. But yeah, it says so-and-so disconnected. So he just, unfortunately, couldn't win the battle of the internet. And then Mirza calls the GG. <laughs> so Goths win. <laughs> Despite getting completely destroyed, and he, the guy said GG, even though the other guy wasn't there anymore. Oh, that's so frustrating. Oh, winning a game, just dominating the goths. And then your internet disconnects. Mom, I thought you said you weren't using the computer till later. God, I was winning a game against a total noob who was picking goths every time. Oh, come on, Mom. Those are like, that's like the early dial-up days. Where, like, you couldn't have someone make a phone call while you were on the internet. <laughs> uh, that sucks. I feel bad for Red. He obviously deserved that win. Blue's an interesting player. Like I said, I think he was just too relaxed. He was just too late to each age. But it's not like he couldn't have clicked up earlier. That's the thing. His economy was really good. But, like, a 17.30 feudal time and then a 30-minute castle time. That could have been improved. It could have been... A feudal time of 13 minutes, 14 minutes, and a castle time of 25 minutes. And that happens. He doesn't take as much damage. And then he's got elite skirms and huskarls. And huns just... They have to go into knights, but then pikemen can come out too. Like, that could have been so much worse for red. But great aggression from red. That's exactly what he needed to do.